been able to understand the meaning of population dynamics in our previous lessons. Just for a reminder, population dynamics helps us understand why and how a population changes in size, composition and structure. So can you tell me why cities are more populated than villages? Why some countries are more densely populated than some other countries? Well, there are certain factors that influence the population structure and size of any particular place. Right? So these factors lead to population change. They change the dynamics, they change the structure and composition of a particular population of any particular region. So to define population change, we could say, population change refers to the change in the size of the population of a particular area within a specific period of time. So in this lesson, we will be understanding the factors that influence the population change or factors that leads to population change, right? So the very first factor could be birth rate. Now what exactly is birth rate? To define birth rate, we could say that birth rate is the number of life childbirth for 1000 persons per year in a given geographical area say a country or a state so if you take country into consideration so the number of live childbirths for thousand person per year in a geographical area is called the birth rate of that particular country so it is usually observed that birth rates are higher in developing countries where there is lack of knowledge and awareness where there is poverty and people have poor access to contraceptions so a very good example in this case is niger it is a country in northwestern africa it is a developing country and people have less knowledge and awareness about the negative effects of high birth rate so high birth rate leads to increase in population so for a developing country an increase in population leads to further shortage of resources or limitation on the resources that is available for the people of that country so a high birth rate creates a situation of overpopulation which affects or adversely affects the resources of that particular country. So this was about the birth rate. So a birth rate highly influences or affects a population of a particular country. It leads to population change. So what goes hand in hand with birth rate as a factor is the death rate. So at one place where people are born, on the other hand, simultaneously, people are also dying. So a high death rate is also observed in developing countries where the country is not in the state to fulfill the needs of the people living in that particular area or that particular country. So death rate is the number of deaths per thousand persons per year in a given geographical area. So birth rate and death rate are the direct and the major factors that determine a change in population. So a higher death rate is also observed in countries, in developing countries with low medical infrastructure. So a very good example in this regard is Ukraine. Ukraine is a country in Europe. It is also a developing country with poverty, that is low economy, where people are not getting access to all the resources and the medical infrastructure is highly affected. So with the help of birth rate and death rate as factors of population change, we will also be able to understand the natural change in population. Now the natural change in population or the natural growth rate can be calculated out of the birth rate and death rate of a particular country. Now to understand that, we will take an example of Lebanon. So here we have a graphical representation of the natural population growth rate of 2015. So according to this graph, if we have to calculate the natural change in population or the natural growth rate, so if we take a look at the graph from the very beginning, that is from 1950 onwards, the birth rate is around 40 and the death rate is around 15. So the natural change in population or the natural growth rate is 40 minus 15, that is around 25. Now, if we take a look at 2015, we see that the birth rate is around 15 and the death rate has stabilized to around 7. 
so if you again deduct death rate from birth rate we get the natural growth rate around 7 or 8 so natural growth rate or natural change in population is nothing but the difference between the birth rate and the death rate so with regard to lebanon we have seen that initially where the birth rate was very high and the death rate was also high so the natural change in population was also high eventually when the death rate stabilized and the birth rate also reduced the natural change in population also tend to stabilize or lower down with time so we saw that the change in population goes hand in hand with the two important determinants of factors that affects population change that is birth rate and death rate so the difference between the birth rate and death rate is the natural increase or growth rate a simple formula to calculate the natural increase or growth rate is by deducting death rate from birth rate so for a population where the birth rate is very high it leads to a situation of overpopulation or simply the population increases right so where the birth rate is higher than the death rate the population increases so this leads to a change in population now for a situation where the birth rate is almost balancing the death rate is or is almost equal to the death rate there the population is said to be steady so there is neither increase nor decrease of population for a specific period of time in a geographical area where the birth rate has been very equal or almost equal to the death rate of that particular area then the population is said to be steady for a specific period of time for that geographical area now another situation is where the death rate is higher than the birth rate so the number of people dying per thousand persons is more than the life childbirth per thousand persons in that geographical area there the situation is said to be a decrease in population so we see that the two factors birth rate and death rate directly and immediately influence or affect a change in population right so However, there is another important factor that leads to a change in population or that affects the population of a particular country at a specific period of time and that is migration. Now to understand migration, let's consider a simple story or a simple example. So here we have Rajesh. Rajesh lives in a residential colony in Calcutta, West Bengal and when he was young, he had many friends to play with him. However, as he grew older, he saw some of his friends move out of the city of Calcutta and shift to Mumbai with their family. Now, he is wondering why did this happen? Why have their friends moved out with their family? Some moved out permanently and some moved out for a short period of time. So, as Rajesh grew older, he understood that his friends and their family migrated to another city for various reasons. So, migration is the movement of people from one place to another to live in the new location either permanently or for a certain period of time. And these are accompanied by certain factors like employment opportunities, better healthcare opportunities or better education facilities. So we understood that migration is the movement of people from one place to another for different factors or because of certain factors or opportunities that they see outside. And this movement can be either permanent or it can be for a certain period of time. Another good example of migration is of the migratory bird, the great white pelican. Now these originally are found in northwestern India, parts of Africa and Eastern Europe. But during winter time, they all fly over or migrate to the interior of India and they settle in states of India, including Assam, Gujarat, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. Now this they do, the regions of low temperatures during winter time is comparatively higher in India, which is more suitable for these birds than the low temperatures of where they originally reside or are present. So these migratory birds move from one part of the world to another 
only for a more suitable conditions of living so here we have a representation of a similar thing where we see that even in population the birds from one place migrate to another place and this is because they find more favorable conditions in that particular area now this can be temporary so with regard to the great white pelican when winters are over they can come back to their original place that is where they were originally residing right now in the case of migration there are two things that happens either people emigrate or either they immigrate so there is emigration or immigration as a part of migration now to understand that let's look at this example so for a person who is traveling or migrating from united states to australia he'll be called an emigrant in united states and an immigrant in australia now why so so he is migrating from united states to australia maybe because he's got a better job opportunity there or maybe because he wants to pursue higher education whatever could be the reason so migration includes emigration and immigration now emigration is simply the movement of people out of the country so e here stands for exit so the traveler here is exiting united states so he is an emigrant of this place while immigration means the movement of people into a country where i stands for in so in australia he is entering australia so for there he is an immigrant so we have already discussed migration in details earlier so if you want to revise the chapter again you can definitely click on the link below and access the i dictionary feature so for the matter of fact that we were discussing migration is another important factor that leads to population change so if many travelers like this here migrates from united states to australia then it will definitely lead to a change in population for both these countries for both the sending as well as receiving country so with the change in population in australia where the population is increasing there is more pressure on the resources available in australia so the opportunities are now more limited for the native people already residing there because of the immigrants so you see that migration definitely affects the population of a particular area be it on resources available to them or be it opportunities that were already present in that country or particular area where migration is happening therefore migration has negative as well as positive impact on the population of a country sending or receiving migrants so both an increase country sending migrants or country receiving migrants migration has negative and positive impact on the population of that particular country so the first impact is the change in population size very obvious so people moving into a country will definitely lead to a increase in the population so it will affect the size of the population that already existed there so migration leads to a change in the size of the population so the change in population size may either put more pressure on the resources or may lead to under utilization of resources as per the population of the country another important point could be brain drain so once people are moving out of a country if they are skilled and educated then they are an asset to the homeland so once they are moving out to another country they are brain draining that country it leads to human capital flight where skilled and educated people move out to another country for better opportunities they are leading to the brain draining of that particular country but it also has an adverse effect sometimes when people move out to another country for better opportunities they make a living there they earn and send back money to their homeland now this in turn helps in boosting the economy of the homeland so on one hand where the country was losing its human resource on the other hand in a longer run it is also receiving money or it is also benefiting its economy so for people who are dependent on the working age population so for example a retired man who is dependent uh, on his son who is working now if the son moves out for better job opportunity then then the aged person or the father has to wait until the son sends back money or is ready to financially support him after some years so it affects the dependent population because they are financially dependent on the working age population so this is how dependent population is affected 
Now the fourth point could be loss of labor. So as I've mentioned earlier, once skilled and educated people are moving out, it is leading to loss of labor and less productivity of the country, thus affecting the economy of the country as a whole. So loss of labor is another important point that is a effect, a negative effect of migration. Another point is it benefits countries with low population growth rate. So for countries like Canada, where the population growth rate is very low and the resources are underutilized there, immigrant population plays a very important role. So the immigrant population helps in the utilization, a full utilization of the resources, thus leading to an overall development of the country or to maintain a sustainable structure. So on one hand, where some countries are losing labor, on the other hand, where they are migrating, they are ready to work at any wage available. So the country that is receiving migrants, they are giving work to people or they are benefiting out of cheap labor. So the availability of cheap labor is also curbing opportunities for the native laborers that are waiting for job opportunities in that particular receiving country. Now besides all these factors, another important factor is cultural diversity. Now cultural diversity is seen in countries who are receiving migrants. So people from all across the world tend to migrate to different parts and as they migrate they also carry their culture along. That leads to a diffusion of culture and thus it leads to cultural diversity. But on the other hand, we must also not forget that because of this mixed culture, sometimes it also leads to cultural clash. So all these factors here has both negative and positive impact on the receiving and sending country. So population is highly and immediately affected by migration as an important factor. So the three determinants that affects or leads to population change are birth rate, death rate and migration. Where birth rate and death rate are immediate and direct factors that leads to population change while migration leads to change in population over a certain period of time. So it leads to a gradual change in population. So in this lesson we were able to understand the meaning of population change and we were able to understand that population change can be determined by three important factors that are birth rate death rate and migration. So in our next lesson we will be understanding another important part of population dynamics and that is the study of population pyramid. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.